Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of The Seditionists. I'm Rob Furman. I've got my friend here with me, Keith Reeves. We're trying a little side-by-side -side, uh, viewing pleasure here. Hopefully he doesn't have any signs that says, you know, I'm with stupid or anything like that with an arrow pointing at me. <laughs> but we'll get to that eventually, I'm sure. Um, so today um, I want to I want to bring something up to Keith, and uh, I have not told him about this yet. I have no um, idea. He has no clue, but I'm going to throw this on him because of an, of, of an opportunity that I have for he and I that I have not mentioned to him yet. Actually, I just remembered it about two minutes ago. Um, so we are going to uh, shoot this out at him and see and see where he goes with this. This is a, a test on Keith. Um, I had right. a, a group and an individual come to me. She actually works with Digital Promise, but this is a separate, uh, separate idea. And she wanted me to start a think tank on a particular topic. So this particular topic is what I'm going to hit Keith with here. And I'm looking for probably eight or nine other people to join us in this think tank concept. And hopefully at the end we'd like to create a, a book of some sort based on this, on this theme. And obviously um, Keith may not have volunteered yet, but I volunteered him. So <laughs> he's, he and I are already in this thing. And we have a person up from Boston who's also going to be helping us. So as we were going through this theme and sort of – Obviously, Keith and I like to do a lot with futuristic uh, components and looking at the future of education. And we were hitting all these different topics, and we sort of boiled down to one that sort of really hits the nail on the head, at least for us, in terms of where do you start. And, and, and the whole idea is we want to dis debate the idea of space and time when it comes to the future of education. Um, space being physical space. Uh, time being uh, allotment of time, the structure of time or lack thereof, and, th and that type of concept. Because really when you're looking at um, all of these wonderful ideas, everything sort of comes down to space and time. Hmm. Um, you know, like For example, uh, I want my teachers to do some team teaching, to get into larger groups and do some collaborative work. Well, you know, in, in, a, in an older fashioned building like I have, my space is limited. I've got a space of a classroom which holds about 30 kids, very Industrial Revolution style. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to change my building, so we have to come up with alternatives. Um, time, for example, even in the elementary center that we try to avoid at all costs, we do have blocks of time. Um, again, not really conducive to a true futurist point of view when it comes to education. So that's the topic. Before I let Keith go off on this, I do want to say if you have an interest in being a part of this um, this think tank, uh, please reach out to either Keith or myself and we can, we can pass the words around. Uh, we'd like to start this discussion virtually um, and then we'd like to have probably two actual face-to-face -face meetings. Um, one potentially could be uh, up at the vineyard, Martha's Vineyard, where we have a connection where we would hopefully, hopefully all be able to gather at the end of our conversations and actually get to writing something that meaningful uh, to better education in general. So space and time, Keith. Fascinating. Um, I have a great appreciation for this topic, um, something we haven't really talked about with our audience, this new facility that I'm at. We kind of, it's a perfect marriage. Um, Discovery Elementary School is the largest net zero energy elementary school ever built in the United States. So we have some very innovative uh, space designs that have gone in here. Our architects, VMDO out of Charlottesville, uh, Virginia have done a really remarkable job of understanding teaching and learning. So I guess Rob and I now have a, a bit of a contrast where he's able to see firsthand some of the limitations of traditional industrial school design, whereas we have movable walls and very flexible spaces and innovative furniture and, you know, no sitting teacher desks for the most part. Um, so I, I guess I have a keen appreciation for the need for that. Um, we toured this school while it was being built and I immediately went back to my last school, Yorktown, and started changing the furniture and redesigning spaces and trying to get people to revisit their classroom design. So I've immersed myself in this quite a bit. And I think that that is one of the two big components is your physical structure ought to be conducive to, if not facilitating, learning. We had a guy uh, come out to our school today, a colleague of mine, Bob Weaver, who was commenting about some of our wayfinding signage that we have around the school. Our entire facility is built to mirror their ever-expanding realms of inquiry and and uh, the different curricular uh, subjects that we're dealing with at each grade level. Um, I don't think a lot of schools do that. So it calls into question, how are we designing 
our uh, instructional space. But I'm, uh, I'm very appreciative of the need to include in that conversation. Once you have the school, then what do you do with it, right? The time aspect, I think, is critical, and I'm glad to hear that bound together. It is, and it pl is a play on the space-time continuum, which I like as well, because I'm a nerd. <laughs> um, but if you took a traditional school like, let's say, South Park, the way that it's built, and put a progressive faculty in it, would they still be able to do the same things? Does, if they brought the schedule with them, what would that look like? And vice versa. So I like that we're really talking about the stage that we use uh, upon which to set our structural designs and planning of time and how we spend it. It's a very interesting question and uh, an area of great interest for me. So I accept, sir. I'm on the bus. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I, I will. I will uh, leave the audience with with a, a couple thoughts. Um, you know, when you're dealing with a traditional building, and most of us probably are. I think that's um, true. We can't use that as an excuse to not be creative and find ways to use what Amen. we got. Like I'm very much, I am a diehard futurist when it comes to thinking about education, That's but true. I'm not going to get a new building anytime soon. So, so that doesn't give me the excuse to say, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to do this. Um, what it does create for me is an opportunity to think outside the box. For example, something as simple as um, I have two teacher teams and they wanted to do a collaborative work and we don't have a, a space where we could put 60 kids in one room. We don't have an LGI room or anything of that nature. So they came to me and said, we want to do this. Help. How do we do this? So we sort of kicked the idea around about, and it may sound silly and simple, but hey, it works. We got them webcams, and we set them up on Google Hangouts. So now they can be in two opposite ends of the building, but in effect, through this, we'll call it a, a wall mirror because it really feels like that. We now have two teachers collaboratively working with 60 kids. They're at two opposite areas, but that means nothing to them now because literally it's just like looking – a little bit farther down the hallway because all you have is that big smart board that now is a window into the other classroom mm -hmm. and so far so good they've done a couple things with it and it's working so you know something as simple as that gives them an opportunity to to in effect virtually break down that wall between their two classrooms that's awesome that's awesome and i think that you're exactly right that we have I often use phrases like this, but I think we have a professional responsibility, if not an ethical imperative, to do the right thing, not the easy thing. It, you, you certainly have a, a taller ladder to climb when you have a facility that doesn't naturally lend itself towards the sort of pedagogy that you and I espouse. But, I mean, who cares, right? You, your kids are no lesser than my kids. Another school down the road is no lesser than any other kids. All children deserve passionate quality them centered instruction and learning opportunities and don't we as the leaders in public ed have a responsibility to do that no matter what if they stuck us in a damp mossy cave in normandy don't we still have to do good work hey, and don't we still have to create those opportunities for those as, kids i completely agree with you as as former uh, music teachers one myself being from west virginia i was in some of those basements i hear you man <laughs> it's so true Oh, man, I used to have a band room where when it rained, it would rain in the corner. Yeah, man. I <laughs> hear you. something, right? <laughs> well, hey, um, you know, the, the reason I think that, that, that I really took an interest to this topic, besides obviously being, being with Keith and hearing a lot about it and knowing he would be passionate about this, um, is also um, – we, Keith and I both belong to VISTI. Actually, he's the president of, of VISTI now, Virginia Society of Technology and Education. Yes, very nice. <laughs> and, um, and I guess it was it last year, I think, or two years ago. I think it was last year we watched this movie that yes, truly – uh, changed my, 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 it really changed my life. It really did. It was called Most Likely to Succeed, and it was about City High Charter in California. And, and they're just, in my opinion, they're doing it all right. And it's just, it was an amazing video to watch. So if you are interested in joining this think tank, please uh, reach out to either Keith or myself. If you get an opportunity to read, to watch that movie, I really think that's going to give you at least a flavor for the direction Keith and I are going. Um, you know, Keith, Keith, I would love if you, if you could. Uh, for this edition of channel, maybe do a little uh, video tour of your of your building. Oh, sure. Uh, walk through the totally hallways, just sort of give them a look at what of what a true 21st century type of building looks like. 
Um, you know, and, and I can even do that with my building on a more traditional, but everybody sort of knows what a traditional building looks like. But I can, we can maybe do a, a, a comparison as to what you have and what I would need to do to make a traditional building. Oh, that's a work great idea. In your fashion. That's a great idea. So maybe, so maybe I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do a little video tour and then you can do a video response and talk about the contrast between them and that'll lead into another conversation. I Excellent. love that idea. All right. Let's so do that, it. that'll be our seditionist for the next time. If you would like to be a part of this think tank, please reach out to us. You can comment below. Please also make sure that you subscribe to our channel. We have things that come out about once a month. We try to be fairly consistent with that. And um, again, don't don't hang out there alone. If you have anything you need, any help, Keith and I are always here for you. Um, Keith, I'll let you sign us off. Thanks a lot. Like you, like Rob said, make sure that you subscribe. We're looking to have a conversation here. For my buddy Rob Furman and for me, Keith Reeves here in Arlington, Virginia. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Thanks.